And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano, get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod, Rick Maxa. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hookup here right next to Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. And boy, do we have a show for you today. Captains Frank Lopresti and Jonathan Yamati from the Royal Polaris are here. We're going to have a great show talking fishing on this amazing vessel, so you stay tuned. This is Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Inside information is everything when it comes to catching fish in Southern California. You need a code group to connect with what's happening on the water. Fishdope.com is your code group. Inside information available at your fingertips seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. They become your code group. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Catine, 365 days a year. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, temperature and chlorophyll charts, hot bite icons, and more. Take it from me, if you don't have Fishdope.com, you're not part of the the in-the-know crowd. Membership is affordable and good for an entire year. Plus, use the special code and save $30 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150. Available with a pro-power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150. Test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. There are moments that change our perception of what is and isn't possible. Cosmic shifts where the stars align with the Earth to alter how we see the world. The release of King Tide is one of those moments. This is the crowning achievement of Costa's 40-year legacy on the water. The culmination of every innovation and lessons learned up until this point. Wins and losses and highs and lows have brought us here to stand witness to a legacy brought to life. To achieve the ultimate potential on the water. Costa King Tide. Rule the water. Welcome. Let's talk. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup, man. What a fun day today is going to be. Yeah, Frank will be here shortly, and uh, he's on his way. Uh, but we have the new man, Captain Jonathan Yamati here. Good morning, Jonathan. Hey, good morning, Pete. How are you? Great to have you back again. And uh, kind of some big stuff going on on the Royal Players, huh? Yeah, especially yeah. for me. Yeah, for <laughs> you. Yeah, so you're now. Uh, unofficially or officially uh, the owner of the Royal Polaris? Is that right? Well, I own part of the you boat. You own part of the boat, Frank, right? Your Frank still owns the boat. He owns the yeah, boat, yeah. I, I do own a part of the boat now. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Congratulations, Congratulations. Man, awesome. So you are now partners with Frank, and uh, eventually, of course, we'll, uh, it'll be your operation, right? That's the plan. That's the plan, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I know Frank is officially retired as captain of the Royal Polaris, uh, but he'll still be traveling with you, right? Yeah, you know, last year I think he came out on four or five trips and fished, and yeah. so he'll be out. Oh, That's yeah, cool. for yeah. sure. So um, how's that going to change things on the Royal Polaris? Um, you know what? I don't really see much changing. You know, if anything, we're always trying to improve things and make sure. it better. So, but as far as everything that's actually in our control, you know, we're gonna go out there, fish hard. The service is always gonna be good. You yeah. know, the food. So everything that's in our control, I'd like to see us do well. So that's 
one thing that we're Roy's still be going to crack in jokes? Yep, Roy will be yeah. there. Really, not much is changing. Yeah, you're not going to make him cut his hair? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Say, now, yeah, now, now do you have the, uh, do you, you know, do you have the, do you have the Frank authority? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. All right, good call. <laughs> For sure. So they're out right now catching fish, right? Roy's on the boat. And, yeah, uh, 18, 18. John 18, Collins. 18. John, John Collins, man, that guy's a stud. He's yeah. amazing, yeah. And uh, I saw pictures of him on your <coughs> Facebook page, just catching tuna, catching wahoo, everything. Yeah, it sounds like they've had pretty good fishing so far, especially in the beginning there on the wahoo. So yeah, good wahoo fishing. His, his trip seems so popular too. In the tackle store, we hear about like uh, all the guys that go really like riding with him, and just a, like having the extra instruction and how fun he is, and holds different raffles and holds court with people telling stories, and seems like the 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 trips that he's taking the charter master role on are so popular on the boat. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's uh, he's good. So uh, you're going to be running the boat. Uh, you and Roy will be kind of switching off. Are you going to be Roy together with Roy, or how? what's the schedule look like? Yeah, you know, we'll be kind of alternating, and then we got Trevin in there, too, who does a great job and mm-hmm. started running the boat the past few years, and he drives more and more trips, so it's kind of a good mix. That's yeah. cool. What's your favorite part about fishing? Fishing? I know that's a tough one. You know, at first, I'd, obviously, it's catching fish, but a lot of it's the people and interacting with them and getting to show them something. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah. Teaching people Teaching. stuff. Teaching, yeah. Seeing them have a good time. You know, that's probably my favorite part about it. You guys are in such a great spot with the Royal Polaris and that the boat runs all year and, like, the different seasons get to provide you all the different things. I mean, the big tuna is awesome, but you get to see it in different facets with the bluefin to go along with the big fish down south that you do with the yellowfin, but then fishing the coast. And and then you guys mix up and do all kinds of things. Like, the Royal Players is always fishing, but you guys always seem to do the best job of mixing variety in with the great tuna fishing that you always seem to have. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's one thing that I really like is, you know, you go from three days to eight days, then to the 10 days, and then January through April where the long trip's 18 to 22 days. So it's by the time you get tired of one, you're moving on to something sure. else. So you get a nice variety. And it's, Is there a favorite time that you have, like, on the boat? Like, when are you always licking your chops waiting for – Coastal yellowtail, or can you not wait to get back down south and tangle with big yellowfin? Or like, is there a particular one that's just like, man, I just I can't wait for this part of the season to get here? You know, I enjoy it all really. So it's kind of like it's nice to just move on to something else so you don't get burned out on one thing. So it's kind of it's, I enjoy the variety yeah, cool. and the different seasons. You're just a fisherman. You just like to fish. Yeah. Yeah. Even on your off time, you go trout fishing. Yeah, I do fly fishing. Sometimes I'll do saltwater fishing, but I guess I'm always fishing. So. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, you grew up yeah, in it, right? Be, yeah. <laughs> grew up in it. Your dad, uh, John Yamati, runs uh, C4 Sport Fishing, and uh, so you kind of grew up that in that whole world, right? Yeah, I've always been fishing you know i think my parents says fishing before i was walking so yeah that's rad <laughs> yeah he's a pretty fr- did your dad uh, get you into fly fishing um you know that's something that you know he kind of did before probably i was born and then you know he's pretty old now <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey man. careful now I'm just careful. i hope he's not listening <laughs> I didn't, oh i'm sure yeah i'm sure he's not you know i, I can't imagine he'd be listening today <laughs> <laughs> but anyways um yeah it, you know it's always kind of been something we've done yeah that's rad so just that's Get, get so uh, give a give a lowdown on the Royal Polaris for our listeners that may, for some reason, not be familiar with the boat. Give a lowdown on passengers, what you guys do, and uh, how does somebody get on the boat? Um, well, first of all, you know the boat was built by Bill Poole. You know, it's I think next year is going to be our 50th anniversary, so that's pretty 50th neat. 50th year, wow. Yeah. And and. And I just, you know, I just think the best looking sport fishing oh, boat sure. that's ever, that has been built from, you know, from day one to current. Like it's, it's the best looking sport boat that exists. When that boat pulls in the harbor here, it's just like all eyes turn. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's pretty iconic. It is, it man. In. It just is. Sure. And the way you guys keep it up too. I mean, it's a constant battle, but it's, uh, it's, it's just in pristine shape all the time. Yeah, it was definitely built before its time. So. Yeah, yeah. So how many passengers typically uh, uh, and, and, and different seasons that you do? Yeah, you know, um, typically we uh, start off in June. I think it's beginning of June now, you know, three days to uh, eight-day trips. 
Mm-hmm. And then in October, we'll uh, start doing our 10 days. And then come January through April, it'll be 18 to 22 days. Um, as far as the loads, we have some that, you know, might have a maximum of 32. But for the most part, you know, we've kind of, cut, I guess, more limited some of the trips, you know, where they're anywhere from 18 people. Jeez. So everyone has their own stateroom. Wow. Or, there's 18 uh, staterooms on the boat. Yeah, there is. Wow. So everyone will have their own room. Or uh, there's other trips where you'll have 26 to 28 is kind of, I think, like our sweet spot, basically. Cool. For like a 10-day or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, anywhere from three to ten days. Yeah. But even at full capacity, the, bo- the boat's huge. Oh, I mean, it's huge. just huge. Like, you know, you, you had talked about some trips having 32 people, but the, the boat fishes that amount without even – I mean, it's – it's gigantic. It's the Royal Polaris. You know, you can you line everybody up shoulder to shoulder, and they don't get past the bait tank. You know, it's, yeah. it's it, yeah. The boat is so comfortable, and it's big everywhere, and the galley's so comfortable. Oh yeah. yeah, just it's it's the perfect boat. What's it like jumping on as the new owner captain on such an iconic vessel, following up people like uh, Steve Loomis? Frank Lopresti, Rollo Hine, I mean, even Tim, I mean, everybody in the fleet practically has run that boat, right? What's it like to take the helm and, and, and say, I, I own this boat? Um, it's definitely special. You yeah. Know, those are some pretty big names in sport fishing, so to yeah. be a part of that is definitely unique, so yeah. I'm grateful. Yeah. Um, See, in, in, in 40 years, they'll be talking about you that way, right? No, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> if I could be up with those names, that would obviously be great. So, Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty special vessel. What was your career path like getting to here, Jonathan? What, I know you've worked with the RP for quite some time and, and taken breaks to do other things and come back to it again. Like, What was the, what was the path that got you to where you're at now? Um, you know, when I was, I always worked on the boat during high school and college, you know, during the summer as a job. And then, uh, after I graduated, um, I came back in 2011 and kind of worked, started working full time. And, uh, as far as me running the boat, you know, I had never even driven a boat or parked a boat or anything before this one. And I ended up getting my license, I think the second year I was here, something like that. And wow. How old? Um, God, I had to be like 22, maybe. Uh huh. Something when like you that. You got your first license. Yeah, and then you know, I think I I drove the five day that first year, and then the year out, I think an 18 day, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Frank came up and he's like, "You're driving," and I was just like, "Okay." <laughs> it was kind of, what? It was kind of sink or swim. So this is all easy after going through that. So. Yeah. For sure, and 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 so, do you like those shorter five days, or you you prefer the longer eighteens? I I could really go either way. Either way, I enjoy them both. Yeah, I'm sure, they have their own idiosyncrasies that make it make it so fun. Yeah, it's nice to take a break from the bluefin thing and go down to the ridge, or you know maybe go on a long trip. So, and you'd mentioned right from the get go how much you enjoy you know sharing this with the passengers, and that's another thing about the Royal Polaris you know family is, I mean there are when the the, when the the Jerry Brown 18 18 day trip went the last time I remember talking with a guy in the tackle store who said like oh this is my I, I, I'm gonna get it wrong but it was like oh, it's my 27th year in a row on this sure. trip you know what I mean like you guys just carry so many passengers that are family to the brand and the boat and the the type of sport fishing that you guys provide yeah and that's one thing that I'm grateful for you know is our clientele absolutely their friends family you know and it's great to have been with them so long and you know I hope another 50 years totally. so that would be awesome but I mean, you you legitimately grew up with a lot of your passengers and now get to you know hold the reins going forward and keep giving them the same experience that you know you grew up with and they're used to having and what a rad experience yeah so i'm really lucky you know, and i just want to thank everybody for uh coming out and it's been great to fish with you and hopefully continue to do so in the future so did you before you were on the rp did you work some of the boats at seaforth um, with your dad you know, I would go out and fish on them. Really, but you didn't work over Really, them. Pete, I never thought that I would run a boat. It was no like kidding. never, like I love fishing, but I didn't yeah. think I would actually. You went to college and said, yeah, I'm going to take a different career path. Huh? Uh, I, I don't know if I fully had a plan, but yeah, I went to college. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and what changed in your mind? What finally put you over the edge? 
Um, you know, it's just something that I've always come back to and just never really got away from. Yeah. So I, your, I love it. It's in your you know? blood. Yeah, it's just meant it's to be. You're blood. supposed to do this. Yeah. yeah. You're a fantastic fisherman. Yeah. You're so good with the people, and this is what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So and like, the right thing is supposed to find you the way that it did. Everything happens for that's a reason. A good, totally. Well put, Rick. Yeah, that's. Um, Frank wouldn't be putting you behind the helm if that wasn't the case. Like, we, we know that, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. for the sure. The boat's definitely his baby, so I'm sure. If, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have known a part of it if uh, you didn't think yeah. I was the right one. No doubt about it. Now, what's amazing to me is that you guys have uh, scattered uh, openings in the schedule, too, through the year. Yeah, you know, it's. Um, I think we maybe have three or four trips when I looked at the schedule the other yeah. day. So it's not a lot, but there definitely is uh, some spots on a few trips if, for those of you that haven't come out and would love to do so. And how do you do that? You know, you could go online, look at our schedule. I think it's royalpolaris.com. Mm-hmm. Um, or you could give the office a call, 619-226-8030, uh-huh. either way there. Yeah, and you can book right online, royalplayersportfishing.com. Yeah, I would say that's yeah. probably the easiest. And, and, and I know that our December eight-day trip uh, actually has spots available. Uh, Wayne Cotto from CCA is the charter master. Everybody loves I remember Roy Roy came up to me after that trip. He says, you're sending this guy every trip, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I guess I have to, yeah. Roy. He goes, yeah, you have to. He's a good guy. Send him on the trip. So but that so eight, did Roy basically give you the boot on your own trip? Is yeah, that, was that what much, happened? Okay. That was pretty much it. He said, yeah, he didn't want me on there. He wants Wayne. So uh, Wayne will be there in December, and I know that's awesome. that trip's always full. Uh, and and December's are like a f- fantastic time, right, Jonathan? Yeah, you know, the last year was very good tuna fishing, you know, that ridge-grade fish, 30 yeah. to 40 pounds. And then it was also good wahoo fishing late. Yeah, so. late. It should be should be a similar lure the way it's setting up right now, the way that the water's so warm and catching bluefin and uh, early spring here. Yeah, there should be plenty of options. I mean, you never know, but it, that's it been, looks good. That's been so wild watching that happen. You know, you'd made reference to it, you know, the traditional after Christmas five-day trip on the Royal Polaris that, that not that many years ago – you would, you know, you would expect to catch reds and lings, and maybe if the stars aligned, there'd be good yellowtail fishing to be had. And then you flash forward a few years, it started having those epic hits at Guadalupe, and then when that went away, it just transitioned right into epic hits on late season bluefin, and you know that went from a rock cod trip where somebody cut their teeth driving the boat for the first time to, well, we had, you know. 25 over 100 and a bunch, you know, it's a, yeah. it's turned into a fantastic trip. Like December is a, December's a great time to be going. Yeah. That mid December, I mean, that's, you laid it out. You could, you could catch that school size yellowfin down on the ridge, yellowtail, grouper, wahoo oh, at the rocks or wherever, and then go hit, get a hit on big bluefin, right? Yeah. All much. of it's in the, in line. Yeah, you know, it's weird last year, or this year, or I guess this past year on the five day when I was running it, it's like we caught yellowtail the first day, then I think we caught two or 300 yellow, I think we had 300 something yellowfin the next day, and then caught big bluefin after that. So. Crazy. Wow. Yeah, I've never. After uh, Christmas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Think about that. After Christmas. Yeah. Wow. And that was different, so that's pretty neat. It just wasn't that many years ago that that trip was about reds and link yeah, pots. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Roy would take you sand bass fishing, you know, uh, yeah. or something. Yeah. How things have changed, <laughs> yeah, right? Totally. Well, as you can hear, I have a great show lined up for today. Jonathan Frank here in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hookup. Yep, going to be a lot of fun, talking a lot of fishing, talking a lot of memories, and just very exciting to, uh, not like it's a new role for Jonathan, but the new position of, of his familiar role. And it's going to be a great time talking with you this morning, and we want you to join us. If you want to be a part of Let's Talk Hookup, we would love to hear from you. Give us a call this morning at 213-432-1090. Again, 213-432-1090 is how you reach us here on Let's Talk Hookup, or send us a text. Man, that texting the show has become so popular, and we want to keep that rolling. If you want to text the show, the only way to do it is through the Let's Talk Hookup app, which is a totally free download. You can listen to all the past archive shows. You can listen on demand on your way home from work, however you want to do it. The Let's Talk Hookup app has got all the shows, and it's the only way to send in your text to Jonathan, and your text to Frank, and you're going to be eligible to win a killer prize. Boy, what a fun one we have today. Every caller and every text 
Dexter is going to be eligible, and we're going to pick one potential winner from each side at the end of the show. Jonathan's going to flip the prize coin to determine whether the winner comes from the caller side or the texter side, and somebody's going to get to go fishing on a full-day trip on board the Liberty at a fisherman's landing, and those guys I know are very excited, going to start Corn on a Island Run uh, next week um, <clears throat> online every day, I think starting Wednesday or Thursday, we'll, oh, we'll right? confirm before we get rolling. But um, Liberty? yeah, Liberty, uh, Sweet. back to the Coronal Islands, and you know, I, I know uh, we'd already heard some great potential scores there. There's been some good private boat fish, so yeah, it'll be great having Taro and the boys back down at the islands on on the Liberty. And somebody's gonna get to go fishing for free because we're giving away a full day trip. When we come back, we're gonna be taking those phone calls. Lots of great info coming your way. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Hook Up Southern California Sport Fishing Voice on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Countdown to spring with exhilarating deals on new Yamaha outboards during Yamaha's Power and Performance Sales Event from now until March 31st, 2024. Purchase a new eligible Yamaha 450 to 30 horsepower outboard and get up to seven years of warranty protection and a Siren 3 Pro package to your purchase of a 115 horsepower and up and receive a bonus $1,000 in dealer credit and half off your Siren subscription. Looking for lower horsepower? Yamaha got you covered. Purchase a new Yamaha 25 to 2.5 horsepower outboard and receive up to $2,000 in dealer credit. Reliability starts here. Offer it's March 31st, 2024. Subject to change. Other restrictions and conditions apply. Select models excluded. 24-month Yamaha extended service added a 36 or 60-month factory limited warranty. Choice offered to Florida residents is a 24-month Yamaha limited warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. Cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. Hey everyone, James Holst here with Norse Lithium, the official battery partner of Let's Talk Hookup. Here at Norse Lithium, we have two goals that drive who we are and what we do. The first is to make the highest quality, longest lasting lithium batteries available with a complete lineup of batteries that include 12, 24, 36 volt and starting batteries. Second, in addition to offering a 10 year warranty on all Norse Lithium Marine batteries, we provide amazing customer service before and after the sale. Check us out online at norsklithium.com that's n-o-r-s-k lithium.com or call us at 831-232-9063 or to see Norse Lithium batteries in person stop by the Trolling Motor Doctor in Lakewood or Anglers Marine in Anaheim and see why Norse Lithium batteries should be in your boat no matter where the adventure takes you we've got you powered Norse Lithium Hey, this is Rosie with Cedro Sport Fishing. We have always been the leader with all-inclusive fishing trips to Cedros Island. We now have two lodges to choose from and both sit on the cliff's edge with relaxing ocean views and gorgeous morning sunrises. With direct flights departing to the CBX in San Diego, we are committed to providing first-class service to our guests and an unforgettable fishing experience. Come check out the Yellowtail and Calico Bass Capital in the world. Nobody does it better than Cedro Sport Fishing. Call me at 619-772-7570 or check us out at cedrosportfishing.com. Book soon. Trips are going fast. Day at the Docks is back, and Fisherman's Landing Tackle will have our largest booth ever. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Both in the shop and out in the parking lot, we will feature our huge inventory of rods, reels, lures, clothing, and more, all on sale. The fishing season is here, so take advantage of our inventory and sale prices while you can. Plus, our expert staff at Fisherman's Landing Tackle will help you get all the right stuff. Day at the Docks and Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Take advantage of our great deals Sunday. April 7th. Yeah. Back to Let's Talk Cook. I'm having a great time here this morning. Now join. Frank, Frank is in the yeah. building. See, you know, this is weird because we have a tradition about giving a guy a hard time about not making it, but when that guy signs your paychecks, like you got to back yeah. off of the hard time a little bit. So you can do it. I, I'm, on the other yeah. hand, just going to be like, hey, right on, Frank's here. That's all right. Good morning, Frank. Hey, Frank. Morning, you look too much fun at the wedding last night? It was a beautiful wedding. That's yeah. So cool. Absolutely. Jonathan's brother. Yes. 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 Who works at see for it. Yeah. John yeah. Yamati got rid of two of them already. Two of them. Yeah. How about <laughs> got that, the huh? daughter a month ago and now Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Well, Congratulations, that's, Jeff. Yeah, that's congrats. awesome. Yeah, that's for sure. I'm sure he's not listening in his honeymoon. I hope yeah. not. Yeah. No, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> well, Frank couldn't make it in. We better hope that he didn't. Yeah, yeah for sure. Wow. So, I, I hopefully you're li- we're listening on the way over and Jonathan was talking about his new royal role on the Royal Polaris. And What's your take on that, Frank? Well, what's my take on it? I'm just... 
You know, I'm thrilled to death that I have someone that is the complete package. You know, there's a, a lot of operators, or this, there's some operators in this fleet that are tremendous fishermen, but they don't care enough to learn about the the everything, every aspect about the boat, and then on top of that, every aspect about the business, how it's run, what you can do to improve it, et cetera, et cetera. And, and Jonathan has proven to be that complete package. And what matters to me most, especially with the Royal Polaris, being that that's the boat I've been on for so many years. God, it's been a long time, since 1977. So, Jeez. So, um, uh, I'm very, very concerned about the boat going to someone who is going to care for it yeah. because I know it's a material thing, but it's uh, close to my heart. Yeah. But and boats like that need to be cared but for. But the passengers, the group of people, uh, it's just such a wonderful clientele that I want them to be taken care of. And that's, yeah. you know, I think you heard Brian Kiyohara a couple of weeks ago when he was on the show is saying that that's the most beautiful boat in the fleet. No question. And it. and it really is. And it couldn't go to a guy that deserves it more. Uh, and like I said, it's from knowing every aspect of the engine room to every aspect of every corner of that boat and uh, and really caring about the clientele. And I must say he is a very, very, very good fisherman. So I'm not I, I'm very proud that he is going to, uh, you know, over the next by 2026, he will probably have complete control of the boat. 2026? Yes. That's yes. right around the corner. It's not too long. Yeah. Does that make you nervous, Jonathan? Um, more excited, you yeah. know. And, you know, I hope Frank Frank will always be out there on the boat fishing, you know, God willing. So hopefully uh, we'll be fishing together for a long time. And, yeah. You know, I'm really lucky to have him as a friend and to be able to call him a partner. So grateful for that. You know, Frank mentioned one important aspect of sport fishing and owning a sport fishing boat, and that's the business side of it. I mean, how are you grasping onto that? You know what? I've always asked Frank questions or spent time in the office with him. And, you know, I've, I've always kind of looked at something like if you're going to be involved in it, you should give it 100% and understand everything about it. So yeah. that's always kind of been my approach. So I've been lucky enough to be able to spend a lot of time with them and We'll both be up early sometimes, and I'll just ask him questions or pick his brain. And, you know, I really do learn a lot through uh, just speaking with Frank and our talks. So. There's a lot to that business side of owning a sport fishing boat, and it's not getting any easier these days. <laughs> right, Frank? Well, you got, you got <laughs> I mean, that, right. the cost of, I mean, from insurance to running an office to fuel to, to t- maintenance on the boat, uh, uh, permits, uh, everything about it is Dealing just... with the Mexican government? Yeah. Who, who, by the way, isn't any worse than the United States government. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, let's give credit where credit's due, so, right? Yeah. So, you know, no, it's like I said. There aren't there aren't too many uh, operators that are willing to learn every aspect. Yeah. That's what it takes to to be a successful operator, in my opinion, on the Royal Player. So pull it off. So what's in store for Frank? I mean, uh, less time on the boat and more time uh, having having fun. Well, there'll be. S- There'll be more time having fun for sure, but you know there's still the Polaris Supreme, the Shogun. There's three sport fishing landings. Uh, you know, am I going to retire? Absolutely not. No. And uh, but I am going to go to El Salto just to, so Rick can eat his heart out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm doing three trips this year. I'm thinking about four next year. There you go. Why not? <clears throat> but uh, and like John said, I'm going to be fishing on the boat and. Uh, Yes, I'm going to have more fun, but I'm going to spend a little leisure time. I'm going to be on top of things too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. sure that of that very much, and Jonathan knows that too. And thank goodness, right, Jonathan? Yeah, and that's how I'm lucky. You know, I couldn't ask for a more turnkey operation, and it's just like I just need to. It pretty, uh, it's just easy. So I'm lucky to have Frank and Monica in the office, and you know, Roy and Trevin and everyone on the boat with the crew and. 
And, you know, I got to say, John isn't afraid to challenge me either on certain things, and that's good. <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> you know? And uh, I, I think there's only one th one time here lately I said, you know, John, I'm going to pull rank on you. This time, um, this is the way it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Just once? Just once. That's, wow. And I don't I'm impressed. And I don't expect there will be many more times than that. Yeah. I don't think it will happen at all. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, we have the phones are packing up. Totally. The texts are flowing through here. These guys want to talk to you, so if, I know you have a good one. Yeah, I, it's just the one that I wanted to read first that I thought was really cool. It just says, good morning, fellas. I just got back a few weeks ago uh, fishing with Jonathan and with Frank and had an amazing time on the boat. After many conversations with both of them, I'm thoroughly convinced that Jonathan is the right guy to move ahead into the future. A huge congratulations and look forward to fishing with you both again. And that's from Eric and Fallbrook. Very good. And I thought it was a great way to start start things off with the text. And like you said, Pete, right off the bat, text yeah. messages flowing through. Oh it's going to be a very yeah. busy one. And, and I, I wouldn't be doing a service without letting you know, too, it's been a very busy morning uh, on the phones. But if you do want to get through, that's 213-432-1090. Well, let's jump into the phone. That sounds good. How about we start it off with John. He's calling us from up in Escondido this morning. John, good morning. Thanks for getting started here on the phones. Hey, good morning, Pete, Rick, Jonathan, Frank. And uh, you guys have, uh, you know, touched on everything. But, uh, you know, my, my story starts with uh, Let's Talk Hookup. You guys got me interested in the boat. And I went to a show. And my first trip on the boat was an 18-day in April. Wow. And, you know, uh, uh, my one of my buddies was like, hey, we got to do a long-range trip. He bailed. But uh, I stuck in uh, what a great group of guys that was, right? But I got introduced to Jonathan and Roy and the boat and uh, just had a phenomenal trip and you know even the other day I called into the office to talk to Monica and Jonathan answered the phone and he's like hey John you know and so you mentioned his customer service with all the people that he talks to and, and things like that you know he recognized my name or, or my voice and, uh, and, and stuff like that so uh, you know I, I look forward to and get excited last year on a neat day that uh, um, Jonathan was running the boat and Roy was going to be there at the deckhand, you know, so I got the best of both worlds again uh, and stuff like that. So uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Frank. The, uh, you know, I, I, I love fishing on uh, your other boats. Uh, I got back-to-back -back four day trips uh, on the Shogun in April, and that's got a bunch of openings. And you know, I'm looking in July because you got some openings, Jonathan, uh, on, a, on a four day and uh, uh, another trip that uh, I might get to fly in on. But uh, you know, just uh, I have I have lots of fun with you guys. So thank you guys very much for all the fun that I have. That's cool. Thanks, John. Thanks. Uh, very nice words, and uh, thanks a lot for the, the call this morning. Uh, that does free up a, a, a line at 213-432-1090. You have a chance to win a full-day trip on the Liberty. Frank? You know, I, I do want to point out one thing. Uh, for those that are concerned about Roy, Roy is an integral part of our crew. He, as you all know, he's an amazing, amazing fisherman and an amazing personality. And, you know, he elected to sell his part of the boat and uh, invest into Fisherman's Processing. Yes. As you know, He's Roy a is a there partner at Fisherman's Processing. But as Roy told me, and I hope that's true, that he plans on staying on the Royal Polaris until he can't get up those stairs anymore. <laughs> that's, that's good. So. That's good news. Good news for you, right, Jonathan? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Hey, uh, I have a great text here from Issam in Irvine, and uh, he wants to know about bluefin. Surprise, surprise, right? Good morning. How... How did the fishing for bluefin tuna close to home change the game in long-range sport fishing? Which is a good question. Well, you want to handle that? Uh, maybe part of it. Well, it's definitely extended the season. You know, it typically, you know, I think it would start in June, mid-June, you know, especially for the local guys. And, you know, now they're getting an extra maybe three months or four months at least out of it. So it's been good that way. It's had a, a lot of other effects, too. You know, it definitely affected how many people have thought about going on an 18-day trip. Uh -huh. That I can uh, see for sure. Because, you know, now you can go out here <laughs> 40 miles from home, yeah. catch a 200-pound tuna. You know, and I, I always want to point out, you know, catching a... 250 pound bluefin tuna and catching a 250 pound yellowfin tuna hmm. is about as different as between driving a semi and driving a mini car. Yeah. Okay. It's just, 
It's just a, it's a different program. It's a whole different world. Okay. Yeah. But uh, and the big draw too on top of that is the wahoo fishing. I mean, like Roy right now has I think 155, 160 Jeez. wahoo aboard. Wow. For 18 guys, you know, that's it's just fabulous fishing. Yeah. So. Has it been good for business, or has it been bad for the no, long-range business? No, it's been fabulous for okay. business. Okay, that's the most it's, important thing, right? It's been wonderful. It's yeah. been wonderful for the tackle stores up and down the, the coast. Absolutely. More people, if so many people had to buy bigger gear, bigger reels, bigger rods, uh, and and so many, you know, the local boats, instead of just waiting for the yellowtail, hoping to bite, bite, be biting by the 15th of April. As you remember, Rick, we always used to... Have the Long Beach show, we were always hoping for the first yellowtail yeah. to bite then, and that would kind of kick off a few of the guys going local. And uh, but now, you know, they're uh, as you see. I think yesterday uh, there were <coughs> five boats out there. Yeah. So in March. That, in March. And yeah. all have having success. I mean, the look at the Pacific Dawn. The limits for multiple trips in a row, and and some unbelievable fishing. I mean, starting early in March. Yeah, all except yesterday. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. we all know the they weather, had a little weather. They the bumped weather into. Weather got to them, and uh, and the moon, and uh, Alier said there was beautiful schools of fish that wouldn't bite, and I think he had eight fish. You know, they're the eighty to one fifties, and and uh, it was down from there. Sure. So and it, it was tough fishing, but that's bluefin fishing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they, they are the most unpredictable suckers in the world. Yeah. I mean, they can bite so good one night, and you can't wait to go to the next night, and you can't find one. And then they come up again the next night. So that's bluefin fishing. Jonathan? And what's been good for us in particular as far as the Royal Polaris is, you know, we're fortunate that a lot of our people come out year after year on the same trips. And, you know, we've been able to add new trips because of this. And it gives an opportunity for people that haven't fished with us to right. get on the boat that's and fish point. with us. So. And catch a big one. On, yeah. On yeah. a shorter trip. Yeah, you might right. not normally be doing a three-day in April because there, there used to not be the thing that the Royal Polaris would target. But now a three-day in April, you could be be fishing 100 pounders the whole time yeah i think we start off our season with four in june this year and you know we're able to add i think three new ones or two new ones great so yeah are there spots available um shorter trips a lot of people jumped on those i believe it yeah they did so i asked yeah i don't think there is yeah so um, uh there's one spot on June second to June fifth, and then there's one spot on June eighth to June eleventh. So a couple okay, of guys, a couple yeah. of cancellations because yeah. they were all full. How did it change what you guys do in terms of crew and I mean, like, what a difference that is when all of a sudden it turned into fishing damn near 24 hours a day. I mean, you know, there's a there's a lot now when you have to be just as active in the nighttime as you did on the daytime. And, and you in the driver's seat role, like how is it making sure that your crew is rested but you're fishing hard and vice versa? Like that had to add a pretty unique challenge to things. Yeah, there's some strategy when you put people down now for sure. And also, you know, it's it's we're really lucky that between Trev and Roy, myself, and Frank, there's a bunch of different operators on the boat. So if one of us goes to bed, you have somebody that fishes just as well yeah. to back you up. So we're fortunate that way. When you got a roster full of A-plus guys, it helps that the next man up is just as good as the guy that he's yeah. leaving. Yeah. We have anywhere from five. Of the six deck crew, five are always licensed and sometimes six. Wow. That's awesome. So we're lucky that way. Yeah. And as John mentioned, the strategy is making sure you get guys down in the slow times mm-hmm. so that nobody gets burnt out or so that and it's also a safety concern sure yeah now is that as as owner captain is that jonathan's uh, duty now is to make sure all that happens whoever's running the boat that's it they make the schedule that's where the poop stops that's (laughs) it that's it it. so one thing that's always amazed me about long-range captains is their ability and and crew too. Their ability to retain names. And you mentioned it talking about John and stuff like that. Where did that come from? I mean, Brian Kuhar is like one of the masters yeah, at that. But but exactly uh, but, uh, but uh, is that from you, Frank? Is that well? Originally, I made it mandatory that by the end of the first day, at end first day of departure, you had to know every crew member's name. I mean, every passenger's name. 
And that was pretty easy back then because we handed out tags. Uh huh. And if you didn't know a guy's name, you just kind of had to slit it beside him and he'd have it on his, <laughs> on his belt loop or yeah. whatever, and you could always check his name. Sure. And I, you know, I was, I used to be very good at it. Roy's a master at it. John's a master. Jonathan's a master at it. Uh, in my older years, <clears throat> I'm definitely no longer a master at it. Yeah, well, I, I can relate no, to that. Let him you. He still is. He, he's, <laughs> and that's where, he, Jonathan, you pointed right at him. That's where he, it came from. Yeah, yeah, Frank, that's one big thing with Frank is he's always working no matter what it is. You know, it's like we have to tell him, hey, we got this, you know, so yeah. he definitely leads by example and that's one thing that, you know, I've always respected about him and the customer service has always been huge with him. So those yeah. are one of the two, I guess one and two are the biggest things that, you know, I've learned from Frank and What's the art in that? How do you do that? Learn 32 passengers' names by the end of the day. I mean, that's that's not an easy task, right? Well, I can't pretend to know them all in one day, but yeah, yeah by the end of the trip, I would hope to know almost yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. name. So that's bull, John. You know them all by the second day. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just uh, it, you got to realize it's somewhat easy for us because. So many of those trips are regular. Right, right. So, yeah. and there's always newbies. Right. But if 60 to 70 percent are regulars, you only have to learn 30 percent of them. Yeah, that's not so okay. bad. Now, it might be a, a little more of a challenge on these three day trips, but I doubt it because a bunch of the regulars got on that too. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So that helps. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, you have a great text, Rick? Yeah, I definitely do. Uh, fire back up here. This one, hey, Captain Jonathan. Uh, you're a very gifted captain uh, and have definitely set yourself apart from others. What is your process like for finding fish when you roll into a new area? Do you rely on sea surface temperatures, reports from your code boats, other information? Um, are you a binocular guy or a sonar guy? I'm fascinated with the process. That's from John in Huntington Beach. Uh, John, you know what? It, it's everything. You can't just be one-dimensional, so you got to be looking at sea surface temp, you know, just you got to take in all the information that you could take in and then let your instinct take over so it's just pretty much taking everything into consideration like that you know we're always looking no matter what so always have the binoculars going but it's just you have to take all that into account and then just fish basically <laughs> how many pairs of gyros do you have on the royal polaris uh four i four. think four. yeah and we're lucky to have ed <laughs> Ed's the eye, huh? Yeah, he is, he does have a good set of eyes. Yeah. And, you know, one thing, too, is it, not so much related to this question, but one thing that I even learned from Ed on the boat is Ed, you know, always takes the newest person and spends time with them and makes them – or works with them to not only show them a good time, but he teaches them stuff, where now you look at a lot of these people, and, I mean, they fish very well now, you know, but – that said, strong suit is he takes the newbie, shows them a great time, and you know te- they end up developing over time, and it's really neat to see. And you know that's one thing that I try and push on all the guys is you know we really need to work with the newer people. You know it's fun to hang out with the old guys, but that come out all the time, but just showing those people a good time and teaching them something is special. So. Sure. So. You know, the teamwork part of it is huge. And and I know for me, I know I always used to get a lot of the credit, and I couldn't take the credit because so often it was those guys in the binoculars, those guys that are looking, looking, not just through the binoculars, just looking for flat spots. You know, you got the sonar going, you got the radio going, you got all kinds of stuff going that you want to pay attention to, that you have to pay attention to. And... Uh, uh, those guys with the binoculars, not BSing, but looking, and and uh, uh, they are a huge part of yeah. it. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's big, a big deal. Boy, that's a thing too. You know, anybody can pick up a pair of binoculars and look through them for for twenty seconds or or five minutes, but to do it for five hours without having a break and 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 you said it best, like not just looking through them, but fishing. You know, it's a it's a totally different thing. I mean, they're studying every piece of water and not notice every little thing in the water. Oh, there's a leaf. There's a yeah. piece of kelp. There's a there's a a, a 
a patio chair, as John can tell you. <laughs> you remember that one, right? Yeah. How many? You know, how many patio chairs? On an eighteen-day trip, and he's going down. To leave it to John, Lucky John. He's looking in his binoculars, and he sees his patio chair, and they just happened blew to off somebody's it. boat or something. Yeah. So somebody. Well, he. I don't know if he knew it was a patio chair then, but somebody was trolling, and woo, we got a wahoo, and uh, Jonathan decided to go back. What'd you get? Eighty? Yeah, it's a hundred maybe. It was pretty good. <laughs> Off of patio chair. Yeah, yeah I think a we just floating saw patio chair. In the absolute middle of nowhere. Wow. We saw one Dorado jump, and then we kind of like just turned to go at it, and then eventually we saw the chair later because you could barely see it under the surface. But That's wow. right. Wow. That was going to be my question. Like, how how many catches have you made from seeing a a single bird or a single small well, kelp know, or a single when, fish jump? Even when you don't have your binoculars. You gotta be looking and thinking because yeah. one little jumper makes all the difference yeah. in the world. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I'm glad Frank brought up the team part because you know it's not you know, obviously the guy behind the wheel gets a lot of the glory, but it you can leave the dock with just yourself. You know, it takes seven <laughs> other guys to make that happen. Yeah. So it's it's all about the team, and we're lucky that we have such a good team from the office all the way down to the boat. Yeah. So I'm grateful for the people that we have, for sure. Well said. That's awesome. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Cook Up coming your way. We're going to check in with the catch report, find out what's biting up and down the beach, a lot more of your phone calls and texts, too. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Cook Up with the Mighty Year 1090 ESPN Radio. Gas prices are going up, up, up. So now more than ever, you need Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. Pull up to the newly expanded Summit Gasoline and get low, low gas and diesel prices for your car, truck, and boat. They can now accommodate 24 cars and trucks to fuel at the same time, plus 12 diesel boats, plus 100 pounds of free ice with a minimum 35-gallon fill-up. Easy in and out, too. Step into the Summit Bistro and enjoy what Martha and her crew have for you on things you can use. Fresh-made burritos, sandwiches, salads, along with beer, beverages, and, of course, always free ice. So many Let's Talk hookup listeners have taken advantage of Summit Gasoline's low prices, great service, and free ice. They've become the largest seller of fresh gourmet ice in Southern California. Summit also sells frozen bait and fishing licenses 24 hours a day. Summit Gasoline, low prices, friendly staff, free ice, and easy in and out with your boat and trailer at the San Diego Sports Arena. It's time to talk about great gear from Shimano. And, you know, uh, since we're talking about long-range fishing, we got to talk about Talica. Man, how do you not? What a yeah. what a fantastic reel that was built, you know, that was built and designed, you know, on the Royal Polaris, you know, with the, the Shimano-sponsored trips. And, I mean, it's a small reel that's lightweight, that casts very well, that's got huge power, that fly lines a bait. Like you say, you, you can't talk about long-range without thinking about Talica. Yeah, and everything from a small uh, size up to the beast, the 50, uh, everything in between, all have a purpose, all have a, a niche for long-range fishing. Totally. And, I mean, in, in going into jigging world and fishing with the Talica 20s and 25s and a reel that fits in your hand and is comfortable to hold all night, but then when you do hook a 150-pounder, you still got the guts to get the job done. It's a fantastic, fantastic reel that was built for this kind of fishing. The reel with the guts is the Shimano Talica at your local Shimano dealer. Safe travel should always include travel insurance. This is Bob Dawson at Dawson & Associates. We offer many different plans, from one-year plans to single-trip plans. Traveling twice or more a year, an annual plan will cover most every trip that you make. Also, if you get injured on a trip, it'll fly you back home or fly you to a hospital of your choice, and it's worldwide coverage once you're 100 miles from home. So call me at 619-990-3068 or go to safarigloballtravel.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. I got a garage full of fishing tackle, and every time I get out on the water, I realize I forgot something important. But I never forget my life jacket. I make sure my buddies wear theirs, too. Save the ones you love. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. 
Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning. Again, if you want to get through, join us on this super fun morning with Captain Jonathan, Captain Frank. Give us a call at 213-432-1090. One more time, 213-432-1090. Not only your opportunity to talk to the captains, but also your shot at winning that great trip. Again, giving away a full day trip on board the Liberty at a Fisherman's Landing. How cool is that? Can't wait to see him at the Coronado Islands this next week. Uh, Roping up uh, what... uh, as we heard yesterday, there's lots of yellows over there. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. As soon as that boat slows down and the sonar dome goes in for the first time, it's it's going to be on. Be good. No, no doubt. Well, hey, with that said, it's time for the Catch Report, as promised. And today's sponsored by Norisk Lithium Batteries. They're here in Southern California, designed specifically for marine use. Norisk Lithium features prismatic cells for extreme durability, solid connections, longevity, and reliability. The Norisk Guardian Advanced Battery Management System allows you to make to monitor the health and the charge status of your batteries by using an app on your phone. Norisk also makes a complete line of kayak and electric reel batteries. Make an investment in the very best for your boat with Norisk Lithium. Check NorriskLithium.com or go see the Trolling Motor Doctor or Angler's Marine um, in an- both in Anaheim and in Lakeside for your Norisk Lithium batteries. Let's start it off up at Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. Talk to the man, Captain Brian Willie's on the line. Good morning, Willie. Hey, good morning, everybody. How's it going this morning? Good stuff. Doing great. Good stuff. Hey, good week for us up here. You know, I just, I'd call it just a similar week to the last few. Again, kind of routine and action in both uh, what we're catching and in the areas that we've been fishing. Our, our half day guys saw the same consistent water temps of that 60 to 61 degrees. And with that, the bass fishing was, uh, was pretty good on both the live baits and the artificial lures. I think the guys fishing the artificial uh, lures this week, those flukes were the hot ticket. In kind of those natural bait fish colors, there's been a little bit of that smaller sardine in and out over the hard bottom in those zones that we've been fishing. So that bass was really keyed in on that stuff. So those guys fishing out on a one ounce lead head, we're, we're catching plenty of stuff on that. And those targeting the sheephead had good luck with the shrimp and the, the live bait or the slab baits on the bottom was the approach for the guys targeting that sand bass at or near the bottom. Our three quarter day guys, uh, Pretty much the same deal, sculpin and whitefish in the mornings. It's been a good pick on that with the five fish limit on that sculpin. Pretty simple uh, for the guys fishing the rubber lures there. And then after we kind of got what we needed on that, was a little move to the inside into some of that zone at Camp Pendleton that we haven't really had a chance to look at for weather or whatever reason. We just haven't been in there to give it a look. And some good sign in there. Uh, the water's cleaned up. There's some kelp in some areas that there hasn't previously been kelp, which is good to see. So we saw some fly line action on the calico bass in some of those new kelp growth zones and uh, some sheep head on some of the hard bottom spots in there as well. Uh, halibut fishing for us also this week was a little bit better than it has been in the weeks past. A handful of fish were caught on uh, Friday's drift trip. So our last halibut trip for, for our derby is a week from today on the 31st. So that'll finish our, uh, our halibut derby for us. And then a week from tomorrow, obviously, we're looking forward to uh, that rockfish opener. We've got multiple trips open on that. A couple three-quarter day boats. We have a limited load, uh, like extended three-quarter day on the new San Mateo. I don't know if he'll be out on the 14-mile bank or not, but uh, he's got some options with that boat to get uh, to where he needs to in that time frame. And then the Fury has his first trip of the season, leaving on the night of the first, uh, fishing the second. So he'll probably be over at Clemente, I'd imagine. He's wrapping up his tremendous amount of boat work for his off season and uh so we're looking forward to next week getting the ball rolling so gonna be a busy week here as we prep for uh pretty much the season get rolling here on april 1st so our number here if you want to hop on a trip give us a jingle 949-496-5794 of course uh, you can hit us on the web to danawarf.com or link us there through the let's talk cook page and uh get your reservations in uh, online from there you have one week from tomorrow april 1st yeah how about that huh you know, so we're, we're excited to change up our, our approach here a little bit. Yep. Yeah. You know, I want to give a shout-out to uh, Donna Kalis, yeah. who works awfully hard to protect our fisheries. Yes, she does. She follows in her dad's footsteps. Yeah. And uh, she's done a great job, and she continues to work at it. So yeah, That great, entire crew, including Donna. Brian Woolley, uh, are big supporters of CCA and work real hard to support right. uh, our rights to go fishing. Right, Brian? Awesome. Yeah, Donna is a bulldog, and she does a <laughs> tremendous amount of work for everyone's well-being in the you know in the industry here. So yeah, that's off to her, no doubt about it. Thanks for for that. I'll, I'll be sure to pass that on to her, Frank. She's uh she does a lot, no doubt about she it. Does. Busy woman. 
<laughs> That's rad. Willie, a great report as always. Glad to hear it. Got some nice looking weather coming our way in the future here. And I bet going to be some more great fishing. Really looking forward to the report next week. Right on, guys. Thanks for that. Have a great week, and uh, we'll, we'll hit you up then. See you later. Thanks. Thanks, Gundy. Appreciate that. With that, we're going to head on into the beach and talk to our surf fishing guru, Gundy Gunderson, is on the line with our surf report. What's up, Gundy? Hey, gentlemen. How's it going? Hello, Frank. Hello, Gundy. How are you? Good. Very good. Hey, uh, I tell you what, spring, we're turning the quarter into spring now as far as the surf fishing goes. Actually, I would say we're ahead of the pace. You know, normally we don't see this kind of fishing in March, but uh, I think it's a function of the warmer water. And uh, we even got Corbina in the catch this week. Uh, that's, you know, pretty early for those fish. But, hey, if they're there, fish them. That's the way I look at it. More improvements this week on several fronts. Good fishing for barred perch. A big influx of halibut. Uh, we had some croaker bites this week. Uh, we had a Corbina bite on, the, on some of the southern beaches. And we also had some excellent striped bass fishing, you know, all in a nice package. Like I said, uh, warmer water. We had real strong tides. We're moving into a full moon here in the next day or so. So all the right conditions. Hook, line, sinker reported big influx of halibut on the beaches. Lots of short fish, you know, usually those males show up first, but over a dozen legal fish to 28 inches. So no real big ones, but a real good sign of legals and some of those hens starting to move in. Our jerk baits have been getting bites, flukes and swim baits also producing. The barred perch bite up there is solid. There's still spawners and lots of 10 up to 13 inch fish. Uh, the big story though up this, uh, this week was, and you know, we've kept our eye on this Ventura River mouth. Well, the last few days there's been a morning bite there on striped bass and they've just been up pushing the bait, the bird works, the whole thing. Guys are throwing pointers, lucky craft, uh, things you can get a little distance in, some spoons, but several fish caught to 12 pounds, uh, one, uh, one pair of anglers had 14 fish in a morning session. That That's really rare to put the wood to the striped bass like that. But, you know, when that stuff's happening, you got a full moon phase here. That's ideal conditions. And that river mouth's been holding fish for several months. So you put it all together, you got a great, great fishing day. Big Fish in Seal Beach also reported a striped bass catch, an 18-pound striped bass taken at night on a popper at the Bolsa Chica Inlet. That's a dandy. Uh, Sunset Beach kicked out a mix of yellowfin and spotfin croaker. That's the first, you know, real solid croaker bites we got. Mussel was working there. Improved halibut fishing. Also, Hogan's and Dana Point reported a good croaker bite developing in and around the harbor. That's a mix of spotfin and yellowfin. The natural baits were Working best like mussel and lugworms. And then finally, Pacific Coast reported very good halibut fishing in the lagoons and harbors. Lots of fish moving in. Uh, I think the top fish was 36 inches this week. A 30 inch, 10 pound, 9 ounce fish leads the shops derby. Uh, but they had several fish in the 30 inch class. And also excellent corbina fishing. Uh, this week, some of the anglers reported three and four corbina in a wow. session. Which is rare for this time of year, but hey, you know that's that's what we got. That's what we fish. Take it. Frank's got a question now. He's going to dump El Salto and go surf fishing with you. <laughs> Gundy, Gundy, I have a quick question for you. When I was a kid, we used to really get some big, big spot fin. I think it was Shark Island and Newport Bay over there by the Reuben E. Lee or whatever it was there. The, does yep. that fish still bite over there on the crawdads? Ah, uh, you know that's uh, that's interesting. You say crawdads. Not a lot of guys will fish those crawdads, but uh, they definitely do work. Ghost shrimp. Um, that's that's an underfished uh, that fishery, the spotfin fishery. You know, it's not a fish that's going to bite a lure. Yeah. So you have to fish the natural, <laughs> the natural bait. And, and those things. Play yeah, that hard. that fishery is alive and well. Yeah. <laughs> That's thanks, that, Gundy. That's cool. That's rad, Gundy. Great report, man. That was an August report, not a March yeah, one. Yeah, that's no great. Kidding. I know that's e- what's funny. Every spot down the beach was biting better than the yeah. next, man. Well, super, super fun. And uh, like I said, we gotta get through this little bit of weather today, but it should be a very nice week going forward and some good surf fishing to be had, man. Appreciate a great report, and man, we're looking yeah, forward well, to another one. You know, one week. other thing. One other thing, Frank is like a lot of the old timers that Dana told me that. 
And, you know, you think of spot fin and, as spot fin runs, you know, because when they show, they show in numbers. And and uh, at, in Dana Point, that short jetty used to load up. Uh, the old timers tell you that it was full of Coleman lanterns, you know, with the spot fin <laughs> fishermen fishing at night and just sticking it to the spot fin there. I can see Jonathan's dad right now packing up his gear to go to the Ventura <laughs> River mouth to catch striped bass. Striper. <laughs> Great job. Great buddy. show, guys. Always a pleasure. Nice talking to you, Frank. Thanks. Pre- appreciate that very much. Well, that's going to wrap up our catch report today. I want to remind you, and you can hear it in that report, spring is here, and it is time to get your gear ready for the spring and summer. Check out surffishtackle.com for the newest in surf fishing gear and fishthesurf.com to help make you a better angler on the beach. Phone lines are packed. If you want to get your chance to get through, it's 213-432-1090. Let's jump in and talk to Daniel. Actually, we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, we are going to uh, take more of your phone calls and get more fish reports here. Got a lot going on. Stay tuned. This is Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. 24 years ago, I visited this amazing place called Haida Gwaii, Archipelago. I just could not get enough of these amazing islands, natural beauty, friendly people, and phenomenal fishing. I knew I had to spend more time there. Moving forward to today, here I am, a fishing lodge owner. Hi, this is Valerie Hilprich from Queen. Charlotte Safaris in beautiful Haida Gwaii Islands, British Columbia, Canada. We are a boutique lodge just steps from the Sand Strait Harbor offering a truly unique fishing adventure. Our fishing is world class. You will fish for king salmon, halibut, link cod, and much more. Our fishing grounds are untouched, unspoiled, and surrounded by stunning scenery. We are dedicated to making your adventure an experience that will be a lifetime of memories. We will welcome you as friends and you will leave as part of the Queen Charlotte Safaris family. You will come for the fishing and you'll come back for the memories. We are booking now. Please give me a call at 1-877-815-2892 or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or website qcsafaris.com. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination for travel travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. This is Captain Art Taylor from Searcher Sport Fishing. Your hook is one of the most important links to catching fish. And at Searcher Sport Fishing, we use and recommend Gamagatsu hooks. The Gamagatsu Nautilus hook is best for tuna. And now with a variety of sizes all the way down to size 4, Gamagatsu hooks are the ones to use. It's important to be prepared with the right tackle when you come aboard Searcher, so that should include Gamagatsu hooks. The -the state-of-the-art long-range sport fishing vessel, the Independence, delivers the top quality, comfort, and fishability you look for in a long-range boat. Veteran captains Mark Pisano and Paul Strasser built this incredible 112-foot vessel with the most modern technology and luxurious comfort available. Once you go on the Independence, you'll be back. Call Independence Sports Fishing at 619-226-6006 or check independencesportfishing.com. 